Dream, search, drive. Cars.coza. Keep your adventure alive, because when it comes to finding the right part at the right price, there's just no place like Midas for the love of cars. I'm a specific person. When I have an uh, idea in my head or a design in my head, I have to get it. Um, I don't care what it takes. I don't care. I don't want to hear it can't be done. And everybody who works around, they'll t who worked on this project will tell you, tell you about me. Uh, from the sound guy to the upholstery guy to everybody. We never intended for the car to be a replica of the car from Fast and Furious. Uh, because a lot of people believe, you know, what the, the Veilside RX-7 was specifically for the movie. No, the Veilside was, kit was actually out long before the movie was even fabricated. This orange color in specific, you know, gained a lot of momentum because of the Fast and Furious token of movie. But we, we never intended to be a copy of it. We wanted to bring something to the table that's unique. Unique in the sense that, you know, we add our own flares, we, we, our own touches, everything from the interior to the sound system, to the air suspension, to the motor, to the paint job, even to the rooms. Uh, we, we didn't want to be copycats. So a lot of people will say, you know, it's not a true replica. No, it's not a true replica. It was never meant to be a true replica because I don't think a person will like if everybody's wife looked the same. So we began the whole process of, you know, actually trying to locate another RX-7, you know, with the original motor. And that led us to a cellar in um, somewhere near Johannesburg. And Bimesh and the guys went, went up on a road trip and they drove the car down. So initially we said, you know what, we'll leave the stock standard motor, put the kit on, and you know, that's it. <laughs> but as fate has it, uh, with the drive back down, the car overheated. Yeah. And uh, I think we lost a seal or two in that. So we had to, basically, we had a position now, we said, okay, fine. We have to also rebuild the motor. Well, let's lose, use it to our advantage, you know, build one. You're a killer of a car. It's pointless changing the, the motor, you know. Uh, the rotary guards will be screaming up there, uh, especially for uh, FD. Uh, so, you know, you have to be original to the car. I'd say uh, rotary is the best choice for this car. I mean, it, that's, that, that's what it should have. We possibly used uh, 100 litres of water <laughs> and uh, ab about 20... Uh, radiator stop leaks to get down to Durban. Uh, however, we made it. A better choice would have been using a Jojo tank, but uh, fortunately we got the car, we got the car down to Durban uh, without it smoking. Uh, however, we knew it had an issue, uh, internal issue that uh, hence us pulling off the motor to get it rebuilt. Yeah. Bimesh has been He's my brother-in-law and you know we've been you know we've been doing this for years so when time came to actually do it you know <clears throat> I know as much mechanical as starting the car that's about it so that's where BMS stepped in you know from a mechanical point of view he oversaw you know the whole motor the removal the reinstallation he installed the fuel tech management for us he wired it up and you know he's it was just like never give up um, unfortunately we can't possibly show you or explain to you, you know, the amount of stress that we went through a few days before Gas Motor Show where we had to launch this car. And then you would have understood this man's commitment. It's been mad. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, it was a pure team effort. I mean, guys working 16 to 18 hours a day. I mean, that was our normal day for us for, for possibly one and a half weeks. Our guy, Farad from Audio Extreme, he, he was another person who really bent over backwards because um, you should see him after five days, he was like a homeless guy. But nevertheless, he bent over backwards, he ensured, you know, our sound system was done. It was not, wasn't the same, it was our crew, Wayne, yeah. Ayush, um, Justin, um, Hussein, Lloyd. Hussein, Lloyd, yeah. it was all of them, you know, everybody just pushed and pushed. That's, that's why when people look at this finished product, they think, you know, it's just a matter of somebody had a whole lot of money and threw it into this bill. No, <laughs> it wasn't just, the, that wasn't the case, it was a lot of, Dedication. A lot of man hours. A lot of man hours. Yeah. Two o'clock in the morning, we made it. A started car. A started, <laughs> a started car. A started car. From yeah. nothing, from a bare shell to a started car. 
basically. Five yeah. days before the show, no interior, no sound, no engine. <laughs> but we Nothing. got there, yeah. The car was a bare shell, just paint on the car. That was five days prior to the show. Prior to the show, yeah. yeah. The car the car went in uh, on a rollback, however, it was a starting car. Yeah, we had to. We, we got a car started before even taking it uh, to uh, uh, gas. We were a bit conflicted because we didn't know what people's reactions will be. Because it's a car that's literally etched in the back of everybody's mind, you know, the similar car from the Tokyo Drift, the Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. So we didn't know what people's reactions were. We expected, you know, it's going to be, yeah, here's a car for Tokyo Drift, that's it. No, <laughs> that wasn't the case. People went mad for the car. And I think that's what basically makes us feel good about it in the end, that, you know, we can build something that people actually love and enjoy. The motor is a fully bridge pot. Injectors, injector dynamics, you have 1050cc uh, primaries, uh, 1700 secondary injectors. We have uh, fuel check smart coils on it, uh, MSD leads, with, of course, the, the race plugs for it. Running FT450 uh, fuel check uh, fuel management. Turbo is a 7675 position turbo, uh, Gen 2. Uh, front mount, uh, all the bells and whistles that goes along with that. Clutch side, we have a triple plate clutch pack for, for the car, uh, which is very aggressive currently, uh, but we need that for the grip. The car is sitting on a set of 20-inch work wheels. Um, this is from the guys at Hannaford Wheel and Tires. Whenever it came to any exotic or any specific special room that we want, we always consult with them and they always find what's unique that they could have for us. And you know, they, they always got, you know, they always come to the party with that. Arthur's question to us was, what do you want? And then uh, the response was, as much power as you could give me. And then Arthur said, you sure? I said, you know, whatever it takes. And then obviously Arthur built the motor for us to how we wanted it, you know, with the bridge part, the extra dowels, you know, everything that go goes with it. Um, so all in all, it's not just a pretty looking car, you know, it's got some serious, serious, serious horsepower. The average man will think he has a replica of the you know from the movie, but the car is actually miles or light years different. Firstly, if you look at the headlights, on a stock veil side, it's got the ugliest looking headlights you could possibly get. I upgraded this to bi LED laser projectors. That's the first. So the orange in the movie is you know quite a flat orange. So what we did was we consulted with the guys from Autospot Panel Beaters, and these guys you know they always have a variety of options for us. So my my call with Shriven was, you know, Shriven, I want a color that's unique. And Shriven actually suggested to me, you know what, um, let's rather, let's go, let's go for an electric orange as a base and add on five coats of pearl to that. And the end result, as you can see, you know, it is actually magnificent. You know, it finished with the piano black. Um, you know, the car just, it just, you know, it just looks, looks the, looks the part. Um, but again, you know, back to that's the, the paint obviously uh, sets us aside. Uh, various components which Valesai said we, we couldn't work, get work in, such as electric mirrors. It doesn't have those little rivets that runs on the body. I felt it was a little bit of, a little bit of old fashioned, and um, so we ended up with a clean, neat, clean looking car. I wanted a thin, slimline air tank, and there were options you could import from the US which were smaller, but it wasn't, you know, to my liking. So I got my brother to make up these tanks for me, and um, yeah, he pretty much got it right the second time round. When it came to sound, um, I got Farad from Audio Extreme, and um, my Farad asked me what do I want, and I told him, you know what, I want a sound system that if I wanted to actually go to a sound comp, I must be able to enter a vehicle. So as, a, as is a pattern with all my builds, it must have sound, speed, stance, everything, best of everything. The drive is absolutely wonderful. Uh, you wouldn't expect, uh, well, a car that, that's modified to this extent to, to give you a, a, a super smooth ride. Power-wise, at the moment, it's tuned right down. However, it is sufficient to, to, to do some mad pulls and some uh, two-step. 
it's it's so hard to put this into words unless you actually drive the drive the vehicle uh, if you pilot it I, I feel that you'll have a better understanding of what i'm trying <coughs> to say but in smaller words it, it's just awesome it's just an awesome little big car yeah that's what i can say about this car so what's really fascinating is you know we took a 30 year old car that's going to be almost 30 years old and we chose to you know work with with that specific vehicle put on a kit and you know basically remaster it and seeing a finished product like this seeing it drive through this the town seeing it on the road and to get the attention it does that's in most cases the car is older than the people who's actually looking at it you know, that's that's amazing the the image of a veilside rx7 is engraved in probably the entire generations our, our our generation's mind seeing it in tokyo drift and you know everybody knows what it looks like but when you see the actual car the complete car in front of you as it is here it's a complete different experience that fulfills my goal my goal of you know what building a car that we can honestly say is a showstopper adventure alive because when it comes to finding the right part at the right price there's just no place like Midas for the love of cars not only is cars.coza the best place to find your dream car but it's also the easiest place to sell your current car check out the sell car section on our main website simply list your car's details and all of our dealers will take bids on your car you just choose the highest price boom your car's gone on to your next one Right, thanks very much for watching the video. Okay, uh, I think I'm done. Yeah, I'm finished now. Cars.coza.